And um, Paul, why don't you take everyone through your presentation? Thanks for joining us today. Hi there. Thank you, Sam. And thanks for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, so firstly, thank you everyone for taking the time to hear about Easy Payslip. And thanks to AAT for the opportunity and to you, Sam, for hosting. Um, just a small correction, uh, Sam, I'm not actually the owner of Easy Payslip. I'm the Partnerships Growth and Education Manager. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> the, uh, who's, who's a friend I've known for about uh, 20 years. Um, just to point out before we go ahead, I'm not an absolute technical expert. I'm reasonably good at the system. Um, I am here with Pete, however, who um, also works at Easy Payslip. He's got 20 years of public accounting experience and he's also very good at the system. So we would like as many questions as possible, but any questions that we can't answer, we'll definitely uh, get back to you and take them down. Um, one other thing, Sam, it's obviously, it's never the most interesting thing just to hear one single person talk continuously for an hour. So I understand that the format dictates that it has to be that way. But when I'm doing the system demonstration, Sam, obviously we can't get lots of people interrupting, but if there's something obvious to you, Sam, you think something on a screen that you think might be worth me pointing out, uh, feel free to interrupt and ask me a question along the way. Okay, so um, our focus today will mainly be about showing you Easy Payslip and how it helps small businesses. So the objective that I've got for the session is that for everyone here to leave with real insight into how to use Easy Payslip by the app or by the website and how it can help solve your problems and your customers' problems. Um, but I'd also like to give you everyone some insight into what we are about as a company, so what really drives us. And I'd like to share with you the insights we take from feedback from our customers, feedback we've received from bookkeepers, and also some Australian Tax Office and Australian Bureau of Statistics research. So um, here's our agenda. So we'll start just going through some of those insights and then we'll talk about what impact that's had on how Easy Payslip operates as a company. Then we'll get into the main body of it, which is the system demonstrations themselves. Um, we will also be talking continuously about single touch payroll. Uh, and then we'll end off with some uh, Easy Payslip specifically for bookkeepers. Um, and some new features coming, and finally, some next steps. Okay, so I'm gonna start by telling you some statistics and some insights um, that will hopefully at the end, we'll be able to pull together to work out what it tells us, us as a software company, but also everyone else as a bookkeeper or as an intermediary or someone who works with small businesses. So the ATO has released this research um, that they've commissioned, I think driven mainly by their concerns about the uptake of single touch payroll for small businesses. And what they discovered was that there are 170,000 small businesses not using any software at all. So that's, uh, that's quite an amazing figure. There's also more than 300,000 businesses using non-compliant software, or old desktop versions of software, or things like Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. So when I see those figures, I think there's a huge opportunity for everyone in that small business space to, to reach out and help those people, for those who are providing technology and services to those people. Um, we've also looked recently at some ABS research that tells us Every new year, there's 85,000 new businesses with one to four employees. So that means on top of the 170,000 people who don't use any software, there's 85,000 new businesses that will start in the next 12 months. It will start from scratch without any software as well. Now, the largest category of new businesses is trades. Um, but there are lots of other prominent categories as well, such as hospitality, professional services, uh, retail, um, so basically there are lots of people that are on the go. Now, when I say on the go, I don't actually mean necessarily just tradies, people wearing hard hats. I mean lots of people who may spend some time in offices, but they're also out and about. So that could be real estate agents, can be people serving retail customers, cutting people's hair, doctors who see patients in many different locations throughout the week, uh, financial planners and investment advisors who visit clients, people who work in childcare centres, hotel managers, all those people who may have a desk, but don't necessarily spend nine to five each day sitting at that desk. 
Um, so, just next bit of data, I'd like to tell you what our customers tell us, and hopefully in a one slide's time, this will all come together. So we talk to every single one of our customers. They all get a welcome call when they sign up, and we always try and get some insight into what drives them. And what we consistently hear is they want flexible technology that's easy to use. And they want help when they have problems using that technology. Um, and they want help working out which services and technology can most easily solve their problems. So they're very time poor. There is lots of technology out there. There's lots of really great products, but it's a huge job trying to work out which bits of technology or which services are gonna make their lives easier. Um, and it's not a very efficient process to go through 15 different products to try and work out which one is best for them. So it's a real challenge for small businesses, even if the good technology is out there, it's a real challenge working out which technology is going to work for them. They also tell us they don't want complicated solutions that involve a big investment of time and money. Um, so these people are very time poor. They like to be focused on their own customers, not doing the books. And they don't necessarily want a solution that's gonna solve their problem along with 10 other problems. Because typically that solution is gonna take more time to set up. It might be 10 times as complicated, and it might take 10 times as long. Um, we've also been told by many customers that they're really grateful when they're provided help in choosing which technology to use. And we ask all our customers how they heard about Easy Payslip, and quite a few of them have told us that it's been recommended to them by their bookkeepers. And the tone they use when they're telling us, telling us that is really, really positive. They're really grateful for help in navigating the, the myriad technology um, that's out there for them to use. Okay, so the last bit of data is just some insight from us as a company. Um, now we have, we've had amazing growth. We've been around a year. We get lots and lots of downloads every single day. And the key piece of information about that, it's not to show off of what a great company we are, um, it's about what it says about the market. We're a small company, we haven't done a lot of marketing so far, but 70 to 80% of the people who download our apps are organic. So what that means is, without seeing any advertising, they go into the App Store or the Google Play Store or to, to a Google session and they search for either payroll or pay slips or even STP for example and they come across easy paisley. So these aren't people who have been marketed to. These are people who start a small business and they know they have to pay their staff. And their first thing they do in most cases, they go to the app store. So what does this tell us about what's out there? So, I mean, I believe the fact we've had such rapid growth is the biggest insight we can get from all that data put together. It tells us that business owners out there really crave flexible technology. So they off their own bat, as I said before, they'll go to the app store and they'll search for what they're looking for. They, these days, it's not like it was 20 years ago. They're not uh, expecting to go to the big brands, whether it's Microsoft or whoever it is, and get some big desktop package that they know helps them do one thing and maybe 20 things that they don't need doing. They go to the app store and they try and look for a small, easy to use solution that solves their problem. Um, it also tells us business owners want freedom. They want to be able to do things on the go. And importantly, they want to stay inside the rules but outside the office. So they know they have to be compliant. They know there might be lots of good products out there that will make them more efficient, that will make them run their businesses better. But number one, they want to know what they absolutely, as a bare minimum, have to do. And that is to stay inside the rules. Um, and the thing we hear about most is they, as I've mentioned before, they need help being guided towards the service and technology that can help them. So it helps them become more efficient and it helps them on that journey to running a more successful business. So this, as I see, is a really big opportunity for us as a company and also for intermediaries and other people uh, helping small businesses such as bookkeepers. Um, so we see bookkeepers as playing a critical role of helping small businesses. So it helps them by introducing them to technology, it helps them become more efficient and it opens up other pathways to bookkeep, uh, to these businesses using bookkeepers for advice in terms of services um, or technology, other sorts of advice, and also using bookkeepers to provide those services. So it's about building that credibility as a trusted partner to small business. 
And we feel very much aligned with Bookkeepers at Easy Payslip because we are in exactly the same space. We are basically putting all our resources working towards trying to be a trusted partner of small businesses. So we're doing our best to build up that credibility so when they think about who can help them as a small business, we want them to think of bookkeepers and we want them to think of companies like Easy Payslip. Um, and another thing, I don't know if you're all aware, but the Australian Tax Office has this big drive towards a digital office. So single touch payroll is part of that, but there are going to be other initiatives in future which will dictate that this digital office becomes more apparent in the way businesses uh, run their affairs. So Easy Payslip also very much wants to be in that space and we are very much looking at how we can help small businesses make that transition uh, to a digital office and how we can work with the experts. And when I say the experts, I'm talking about bookkeepers like yourselves, how we can work together with you to help businesses make that transition. Okay, so that was just a little bit of an insight into what drives us about what research is out there and how it shapes what we do. Um, so now I'm gonna tell you a bit about uh, Easy Payslip and how we've used that, those insights to develop the company the way it is today. So we were started up uh, just over a year ago um, by an accountant. So he was repeatedly asked by small business clients for an easy to use payroll solution. So he had a look around, he searched, and he could not find one. So he was not interested in looking for you know, complex accounting packages. He was working with clients who might be a plumber who takes on an apprentice, might be a cafe owner, who's also doing a 30, 30 hours a week actually on the cafe floor itself. Could be a hairdresser who runs a hairdressing business, but also actually does the haircuts as well. And there wasn't a good solution that he was comfortable recommending to his clients. Um, fortunately, through his accounting experience, he dealt with a lot of the startups and he also had some digital innovation experience. So he took a chance and decided to build an app. And that's how we ended up with uh, Easy Payslip. Um, we are very much aimed at micro businesses. So these are people who don't have payroll departments, uh, don't necessarily even have payroll offices. Often it might be the business owner does it, it might be the business owner's partner who does that. Um, in one instance, we spoke to a customer who was the business owner's mother, a seven year old mother um, who did the sort of admin for them. Um, but a lot of them do have bookkeepers. Um, as I said, we've been around just over a year um, it's worth pointing out, we did not come about as a result of STP, and that's not why we're less than $10 a month. We were around before STP was announced. Um, we always planned to be in this space of helping small businesses, and we were always priced at $8.80 a month. So this is what we've always been about prior to um, the government or the ATO announcing our single touch payroll. Um, we also have a very clear idea about what we are and what we are not. So we are not necessarily for every business, but we are very certain about what we are. So everything we do is driven by four key words. Now they are simplicity, mobility, compliance, and value. So what that means is any time we add functionality or we change the app or we create you know, some additional workarounds, it has to fit into those four words. So it has to be simple. It has to be mobile. It has to be compliance with the, you know, the relevant ATO government legislation, and it has to provide value for money. Um, and it's a really good insight into everything we're about as a company. So what you will see as you see the demo, and if you've used the app already, we do a lot of things that small businesses need when it comes to payroll, but we absolutely do not do everything. For example, we don't do fringe benefits tax. Another example is you can't do the banking. So you can't upload ADA files and do the actual um, EFT transactions. Um, we looked very closely at that. And we decided that the idea of running payroll and then getting onto a desktop machine to download a file, then logging onto internet banking, uploading a file, and then managing the reconciliation at the other end did not fit in with those four words of simplicity, mobility, compliance, and value. So we worked out from speaking to our customers that given a lot of them have one or two or three employees, it's actually easier and quicker for them to log on to the internet banking on their phones, 
they've got their employees saved as favourites and they make those payments and it takes them about two minutes. But it's worth pointing out we are always looking at future technology. So there will be ways in future where we can automate that payment through the app without needing ABA files. So there are some new entrants to the banking space, some startups which um, are looking at that sort of thing. There are also great products like um, GoBill where potentially we can use a payslip as an invoice. So that might involve when you generate a payslip, it automatically gets sent to a company like GoBill who can use that payslip as an invoice and automatically make a payment to the customer. So when we can design a really simple process like that, that still means your payroll can be done in two or three minutes, that's, that's when it's time for us to do it, but only when it fits into that philosophy. Um, so, as I said, we can't do everything, but there's a lot we can do. We can say to customers, we can say to bookkeepers, if you're concerned about missing STP when you're away on holidays, you can actually do it all from your smartphone while you're on the beach in Spain. You can actually do it and it will take less than five minutes. You can do your payroll if you're sitting in front of the TV watching the footy. So you do have uh, lots of different options. We can also say um, that you don't need to register with the ATO in order to use the easy pay slip for STP, which is another issue we hear um, that troubles small businesses and troubles, um, troubles bookkeepers dealing with small businesses. Um, so they're just a few of the sort of simple things about our product. Um, okay, we're gonna get into the demos in a moment. Just a couple of key things to tell you about the product first. We are very, very big on customer service. So every new user gets a customer service call um, within a day or two of signing up, and that's just to welcome them. It's also to see if they're having any problems with technology, if they'd like some help setting up employees, if they want any you know, a deeper understanding of how things work. Um, everyone gets a free 30-day trial with full functionality. Um, we have a local Sydney-based support team, and everyone in the company speaks to customers. So there's a rule in our company that every single person who works in our company has to do a rotation of work in customer service and tech support. And we do that so everyone, whether you're designing a system, whether you're working the back end, whether you're doing marketing, means that you get direct insights from dealing with customers. So if you do call us, um, it's possible you'll speak to me, it's possible you'll speak to Matthew, our product manager, or Kevin, one of our customer relations guys. You might speak to Peter, our CEO, all of us rotate doing that, and it's a way to keep us on the ground and make sure that we never lose focus from our customers. Okay, so that was just a bit of a general intro about the, com about the company. Now I'd like to get into the actual demonstrations themselves. So I'll be doing a live demonstration here. Um, so firstly, we can access your Easy Payslip account by any Apple device, Android device or via the Easy Payslip website. You are not limited to one or the other once you've set up an account. As I said, it can be accessed. You can log on from any device at all. Um, we have an STP solution. It's not live at the moment, but it is going live on the 1st of July. There's a reason we've decided to do that. Um, STP works on reporting year to date values. So if we were to start, for example, in May, what that means is when someone first runs a payslip with STP, they need to manually or calculate and then manually input all their year-to-date values. So we took a decision, keeping in mind that everything we do, we'll try and make it as simple as possible. We took a decision that will hold off till the new financial year, so no one has to worry about um, calculating you know, year-to-date values from, the previous, uh, from previous months. We have, have designed the solution, and I'll be giving you a demo of, of, of how that all works. So, We'll start with some simple payroll scenarios on the website and on the app, and then we'll do some slightly more complex scenarios, and some reports, and then we'll look at STP. Okay, so I'm just gonna to switch to my browser now. So, first thing I'm gonna show you is um, just about how data is structured in, in uh, Easy Payslip. There's only three main things to do. You could say four. There's setting up the employer details, there's setting up the employee details, then there's running payroll, and then the fourth step you could say is inquiries or reports, that kind of thing. So I'll just show you how that works. So this is the Easy Payslip website. I'm gonna log on.
Okay, and this takes us into Easy Payslip. So first thing, I'll just show you how the data is structured. I'm going to click on the left-hand side here where it says Easy Payslip. So that's not Easy Payslip software company. This is the Easy Payslip test account. So the very first thing when you start an Easy Payslip account is you set up the company. So there's one screen of data here. So we have our ABN, email address, normal address, business name, phone number, postcode, and state. They are just the basic details you need. That's the first thing you set up when you set up an Easy Payslip account. Um, so the next thing that you set up, so that tells you how simple it is to, to, to cover step one. So step one is done, that's setting up your business. Step two is setting up an employee. So I'm just gonna put employees on the left. Now we have a bunch of uh, employees set up here. I'm just gonna click on the first one and show you this employee record. I'm gonna to go to edit. Now there are a number of screens involved in setting up an employee. Now this whole thing from creating a new account to running payroll, you can do it all in 10 or 15 minutes. I would say the most time consuming part is setting up an employee. And that's because there's quite a lot of information that needs, needs to be entered. So you can see up here, there's a number of different areas. There's details, payroll, taxes, and super. So details contains personal details. So that's their email address, their address, um, whether they're permanent or part-time. You can see we help you with those fields just by hovering over the fields. It tells you what that field is. Date of birth, address, employment start date, and whether they're full-time or part-time. It also tells you where you can find that information on the employee's tax file declaration. That's details, I'm just gonna click on payroll now. So this is where, um, what type of employee they are, uh, their annual salary. Now, if they're uh, weekly or fortnightly, then you can put in the weekly or fortnightly salary. Um, number of hours in the pay period, and then the derived hourly rate. We also have options over here about whether the employee works overtime and whether they have allowances. And those options dictate what fields will appear when you actually run payroll. So you'll see at the top, we've also got this entitlements tab. And this determines whether your employee is entitled to annual leave, holiday leave loading, personal leave, sick leave, and long service leave. Um, the fields here allow you to put a carryover balance. So this is where you've got a carryover balance from the previous system we're using. So this is something you set up once at the beginning, and then that gets mapped to that employee's um, annual leave balance. We then have taxes. So this is where you put in tax file number. And from the drop down, we can choose what tax brand, whether they're a student, whether they have the tax free threshold or not, and a number of other options. And then the last screen is super, where we can put in, if we want, the employee's super details, and also has their superannuation rate, which defaults to 9.5%, but could be changed. Okay, so that is the employee setup, just working your way through those screens. I'm also now just gonna quickly show you in settings, what we have here, we have the tax file number declaration. So if you click on that, it will bring up the form, which you can email to your, to your employee. Also has the super form. And we are also looking at building into that the authorization, the STP authorization form. So I haven't got that yet, but we're hoping to do that. So that will allow you to send directly to the employee the form that authorizes you to do STP payroll on their behalf. We also have this notifications button here, um, which allows you to uh, work out where the pay slips go. So pay slips would typically go to the employee. Um, it may also go to the employer, but as a bookkeeper, you could type your own um, email address here. Um, so you would get a copy of the pay slips as well. Okay, so that is basically all there is to setting up Easy Payslip. Once you've done that, you are ready to run payroll. So I'm gonna do that now. 
I'm going to click on payroll. I'm going to, I can select multiple employees or one. So I'm just going to do one for the time being. And I'm going to enter payroll date of, let's have a look. So let's go from the, let's go back to April. So we'll go from the 21st of April to the 27th of April. And then I click process payroll. Okay, so this is the one single screen that needs to be filled out to run payroll. So notice it's got that period there that we entered on the previous screen, or you can manually enter here. It also has the payment date. So that is the date you're actually making the payment, which might typically be a day, a day after you run payroll, or perhaps the last day of the period. So I'm just gonna make that the 28th. Now it pulls in these figures from the employee record. So it peels in the base hourly rate, pulls in their standard hours, and it calculates that figure for you. Payment type determines how you are gonna pay them. So we are gonna pay this employee by EFT. Now that is all there is to the standard scenario. So if I scroll down, you'll see we can add additional uh, base rates, we can do overtime, we can do allowances, taxed and untaxed, and we can do entitlements. We can also manually write, uh, overwrite PAYG and super. But for a basic scenario, that's all you need to do. Select the pay periods and date, select the payment type. Uh, you can amend the hours or the rate if you need to. And then we click on process payroll. And it generates a payslip. So let's just have a look. Scroll down. So there's our payslip, tells us who the employer, who the employee is, tells us the manager. It has the logo here. This is not Easy Payslip's company. This is the logo that we've entered in the employer record. Hourly rate period uh, and all the basics you need here, including uh, superannuation. Now it's worth pointing out a useful thing is that this record is not written to the database yet. If I click send, it will send it to the employee. It will send it to me as the employer and it will write to the database. However, I can also hit discard and it will delete it from the record. And it says payroll successfully cleared. So that is very useful. If it basically allows you to simulate what you're going to do. So if you're mucking around with some different hourly rates or you've added an overtime rate, you wanna see how it calculates, you can do that from this screen. You hit process payroll and it basically simulates that payslip for you but you have an option at that point of backing out. And then again, it comes up with the payslip. Let's say I'm happy with it now. And then I click send. And it says payroll successfully sent and takes me back to this screen. So that is all there is to it, to running payroll. And that should have sent that uh, payslip to that employee and also to the employer or potentially the bookkeeper if they updated uh, those settings, uh, their, their email address in the settings. So that's a very basic scenario of running payroll. So what I would like to do now, uh, can I just ask you, Sam, um, I'm not gonna flick and look at the questions, but would you just be able to take a look at the questions? Just let me know if there's any questions relating to what I've just done where it might be worth me pausing and answering those questions at the moment. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for the demonstration of how to run it. We do have a few questions that relate to areas you've just gone through. So mm -hmm. in, in that case, I might just jump on and have a look. Sure. Okay. Okay, one second. Okay, so what I might do... No count. Okay, so what I might do, I'm just going to do another uh, demonstration just on, on the app, and then we'll come back to those questions. Sure. All right. Okay, so how do I minimize that? Just bear with me one tick. Uh, Sam, can you tell me how I can minimize the uh, the questions? Uh, the questions are popping up, are they? Um, yeah. 
Uh, hang on, it's all right, I worked it out. Okay, no worries. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just to show you how to do a different thing on the app. So this is a replication of my mobile phone. I'm just gonna scroll across, uh, there's the Easy Pastive app, so you can see it here. This is the Easy Pastive icon, and I'm gonna go into that now. So I'm already logged on, and by default, it goes to my employee screen. So I'll just show you how it's set up. You can basically see exactly the same data. So I'm gonna click on uh, settings, and I'm gonna click on Easy Pastelet, the company up here, and it shows me the business details. So that's the business details that you set up, and then I can go back, and I can go to employees. And I can, by scrolling across, by swiping across, it gives me these options here to edit or even delete. So no, I don't want to delete that. But I do want to edit. So that then takes me into the employee record. And it's very simple. Just by scrolling from right to left, we can just flick between those screens. So it's a really nice interface. We also have the option of clicking on the broader headings up the top. So I can click on entitlements, or I can click on super, or I can just go back and forth and just flick between those screens. So it's a really nice, easy to use interface and it basically replicates what's on the app. I'm just gonna X out of there. Okay, so I'm just gonna run payroll. So I click on payroll. I'm gonna click uh, on Allison again, and I'm gonna click, ah, so I'm gonna put the pay, the pay periods in first. So this one we will do from, uh, let's do it from, let's go do it from May. So we'll go the first of May, and then we'll go to the uh, 7th of May, and then we come down to process payroll. Okay, so the screen looks very similar, except it's all done on your phone. So we put in a payment date, which I'm gonna put as the 2nd of May, which defaults to. Um, again, it's brought in the pay period from that previous screen. We choose the drop down to choose an EFT payment. And that's basically all we need to do. So again, it's got these additional values here. Um, where we can add uh, additional base rates, we can add overtime, we can add allowances, and we'll go through that in another scenario. When we're happy, we click on the process button here. Um, and once again, it generates the payslip. So two buttons here. If we're happy with that payslip, we hit that button up there and it will send it to the employee and to the employer. If we're not happy with it, as I said before, it hasn't written it to the database yet. So we can hit the X. Oops, sorry, my phone's just locked. So we can hit the X. Um, it says, are you sure you want to discard? So I say yes, and then I can click OK. And it takes me back to that screen where I can now amend any values if I wasn't happy with that. Okay, so that's the basic payroll process using the app. So I'm just gonna jump out of there for a second and just look at some of these questions. So I've got, uh, I've got Pete here with me. I'm just gonna help me answer some of these questions. As I said, I'm not the absolute technical expert. So just bear with me one moment. So currently we can't, so the first question from Terry, um, um, in entitlements, can you add an extra category such as an RDO? So no, you can't do that at this point. Um, so the next question, um, how is a system set up to calculate the 9.5 super? Um, so it is on OTE only. So if you were to add, uh, let me just go back to the payroll screen to give you a demonstration of this. So I'm just gonna generate payroll again. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna go into Alison Kerr, minimize the questions for a moment. So, super and leave is calculated on the hours up here and the amount that that derives and any base rate and additional hours. It will not, so you have the ability, if you add additional hours and base rate, you will be adding to super and also to any leave entitlements. Where you add um, overtime, sorry, not allowances, when you add additional base rates. So that first um, additional base rate there. Where you're adding overtime or allowances, taxed and non-taxed, it, um, it will not calculate super on those values and you won't be accruing leave balances uh, on, those, on those balances. Hopefully that answers that question. Let's just see what the next one is. Okay, so from uh, Diane, so clients will have this on a desktop and or mobile. As a bookkeeper, I need to log into their account on at least a monthly basis. Is that this easy to do? Do I have a separate login or do I use a client's login? So I don't want to answer that in too much detail because we are going to come to that towards the end. So what I'll say at this point, um, you can absolutely do that. You can log in uh, using, a, currently we have one logon per account. So there's nothing to stop you logging on using a, a different device. But we are catering in future to allow bookkeepers or intermediaries to have a dashboard where they'll be able to access all their customers' accounts through their own single logon. Okay, the next question from Diane. Can you label base hourly rate additional to show um, an RDO detail? Uh, I'm just going to ask Pete this question. Can we name those fields? I think that's referring to, um, I'm assuming that's referring to actually naming the additional rate so it comes, so it shows on the pay slip. Uh, so you can't label that at this stage, but it's on our roadmap to allow um, the user to determine what description comes up. Okay, and another question from Sue. Some allowances are considered OTE and attract super. How is this handled in easy pay slip? Um, so, um, could you give me an example of what, what allowances they are? So actually, what I'm gonna do with that question, so I can't actually answer that question now, but I will talk to our product manager and get back to you and fill that in the, uh, in the FAQs that Sam puts together. Okay, so what I would like to do now, I'll just continue with the system de demonstration. We've done basically the very simple scenarios. I'll just show you now how to do some of those allowances and, and a more complex scenario. So I'll do it on the website, just because the screen's a bit bigger. So I'm gonna go back to, as if I'm starting from scratch. Okay, so I'm gonna click on payroll. I'm going to select our employee again, Alison Kerr. I'm going to enter the date. So we'll do May, we'll do that period again. So let's go from the 5th to the 11th. And then I click process. Okay, so again, we always choose payment type such as EFT. Now, the scenario I'm gonna do now, we're gonna add some additional base rates. So let's pretend, for example, where we've got a hairdresser who always works a Saturday and gets a different rate of pay. So we're gonna add a base rate. So all I do is click on that plus there. I select additional base rate one. So this is where in future, we're looking at allowing you to put in a description of what that base rate is. So it will appear on the base on, on the slip. Um, the rate we'll put in is $35 an hour and we'll say she does four hours. So I'll calculate that for you there. And that's basically all there is to it. And we click add. Now when I X out of that, you can see now it's out of that here. So it's got additional base rate run at $35 an hour, four hours equals 140. You can always delete that or you can uh, change it 
or you could go and add another additional base rate. So now you can go additional base rate two. She might work a Sunday, for example. She might get, say, $40 an hour, and she might be doing another, say, three hours on a Sunday. And that. So what I'm going to do now, so we've added seven hours at different rates. I'm going to reduce her standard hours down to 31. Okay, so that um, obviously recalculates the figure based on a standard hourly rate. I'm now going to enter some overtime. So we're going to say that um, Alison has been had a very busy week and we're going to click on overtime. So we just click on the plus. It lets us do by default one and a half times or double time or we can manually enter the rate. So we'll just do one and a half times. Um, we'll say that she's done six hours of overtime and it calculates that. So notice it's taking her standard rate, which is 28.34, as we can see up here. It's multiplying that by six and that gives us that total amount. And then again, we click add. And it nicely puts it there in our screen. Again, very easy to delete that or go in and change that. So I've made a mistake. I click on edits and I can then change that to double time, for example, and save. Okay, so I'm also going to just enter an allowance now. So again, same functionality, just click on the plus. Um, so again, we've got a couple of defaulting ones here for travel and for meals. We'll do one for travel. We've also got a manual entry. Actually, let's do one for a meal. So we'll say she got one meal because she stayed late and we give her, let's say, $25 for a meal. And again, that calculates there, and then we click add. So again, we can see all the calculations it's made. Um, now, the last thing I'm gonna do, let's just say amongst all the overtime and the Saturday and the Sunday work she did, she also took a day's leave. So I'll put in uh, 7.6 hours for annual leave, which is taken. And then I'm gonna reduce her standard hours by 7.6. So that means, let me think, 23.4, I think. Uh, apologies if I got that wrong. And hopefully that will let all that up. Now, lastly, I'm not gonna do it now, but you can actually manually overwrite PAYG in Super. So if you've got a, a business, for example, who are making one large one-off payment to themselves at a certain point throughout the year, they might have had a successful uh, quarter. Obviously, they're going to go and it's, it's going to calculate that tax based on them earning that every year. So you can actually manually, just for this payslip, it's not going to change the employee record, but just in this payslip, you can manually enter the tax amount or manually enter the super amount. And now I'm going to click on process payroll. And here's that payslip. So you can see it's got the additional base rate. It's got, sorry, it's got the base rate and it's got the two additional base rates. It's got the overtime at double time. It's got holiday pay. It's got holiday leave loading. And it's got a taxable meal allowance. It's calculated withholding tax. And it's also shown you the leave balance and she's unfortunately gone into negative because when I set up this employee, I forgot to give her a carryover balance. And it's calculated her super. And then if we're happy with that, we just click on send. If we're unhappy with it, we can hit discard. It will not write it to the database and you can rework those figures. Just hit send. And it says it's successfully sent. Okay, so that's the basic scenarios that we wanted to show you. So as hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll agree with me, it is not too complicated. There is not much more that we've tried to do in building a system and there's not much more that can do. It basically generates pay slips, it makes it easy for you to manage leave, balances, that sort of thing. Um, you can do everything in a couple of screens and you can do it using any platform you choose. What I will show you is just very quickly a report. So if we click on reports, 
We can do a payroll activity summary. So I will just select that one employee again. I'll go back to, uh, let's go back to the beginning of April, to the end of May, and I'll click process report. And there's that report. So it shows you wages, deductions, taxes, net pay, and super. And you can obviously run that report for uh, any period you need. Uh, the other thing I'll show you, I'll show you another report. It's just a payslips report. So if you need to find a payslip for any employee, or if you need to delete a payslip, I'll talk more about that in a second. Again, we can select dates, or with this report, we can actually leave out we can leave the payslips uh, fields blank and it will give you all the payslips for that employee. I'll just process that report. And it shows us for this employee in that date range, there are three payslips. You can select one. We have the option of viewing the payslip. We have the option of resending the email, so it will resend it to the employee. We also have the, the, uh, the option to delete the payslip. So if you delete the payslip, it will delete it from the database and that will allow you to regenerate that payslip. If you try now to regenerate a payslip for the same period it's already covered, it will not let you. So it will not let you have two payslips for the same period. You need to delete it first. Another thing to remember is you need to delete them and redo them in order. So for example, if I deleted the earliest payslip, it will not let me redo that payslip because I've got subsequent payslips that will show incorrect year-to-date figures. So if, for example, you had a problem with this middle payslip here, what you need, and it needs to be redone, what you need to do is delete uh, the first two payslips and then redo them in order, where you do the latest one first. Okay, so that's the basics of our demonstration. I'm just gonna jump back and see if we've got any questions. Okay, can you adjust leave accruals if you've made a mistake in the beginning from Diane? So I'm not quite sure. Um, so I think you might mean the carryover balance. Uh, yes, you can go and adjust that carryover balance that you enter when you first set up the employee. Um, okay, so just a question from Rochelle. Um, if we delete an employee mid-year, can you confirm that the payments made to them will be in the database uh, for year-end reporting and pay finalisation? Uh, I just want to check, I'm pretty sure it is. I know you have the option of deactivating as well as deleting employees. I'm just going to ask Peter to stay with me too. If you've uh, raised pay slips, you have, you I can't delete them. Yeah. yeah, that's right, okay. So, if you've got an employee that you have active pay, that you, where you've raised pay slips for that employee, it will not let you delete that employee. So what you do then is you deactivate them and they will always be in the database. If you really wanted to get rid of an employee and you hadn't made any payments to them, then it lets you delete them. Or if you created payslips in error, you'd have to delete those payslips first and then you can delete the, uh, the employee. So I'll just go back to, if we look at our list of employees here, you can see down the bottom, we've got two inactive employees. And that's important to realise because the way our pricing works, you pay a standard $8.80 for one to four employees and you pay slightly more for four to six employees or up to 10 employees. So our account here, we have the one to 10 subscription model and as employees have left, so we've deactivated these two employees and that's allowed us to add more with that same subscription model. I will point out, however, you can actually, if you're that way inclined, have more than 10. You can actually keep adding employees at $2 each. Okay, so that was system demonstration. I hope that was uh, clear enough for everyone. I'm just gonna jump back to the slides. There's just a little bit more information, especially about STP, that I imagine everyone's quite interested in hearing about. So, firstly, when we go live with STP, it will be exactly the same process for setting up employee de employer details, so that one screen of information. It will be exactly the same process for setting up employee details, where you just work through those screens, putting in the employee data, and it'll be exactly the same process for running payroll. However, there will be 
one extra step at the end where you submit the STP file, and I'm just going to show you now exactly what that looks like. Firstly, good news is no registra registration is required uh, with the ATO. The way it works, because we're a, software, uh, we're a digital service provider at Easy Pace, it, it uses our OS key, and the, and, and the uh, software ID gets sent with the file through us. So there's no need to have your customers, whether you're doing it on their behalf or, you're, or they're doing it themselves, to register with the ATO. Um, you do, however, still need the STP Engagement Authority form. Now, I did notice that um, the AAT have kindly done up that authorization form. So we are looking at getting that in the settings in the app where you can automatically uh, email that to your, custom, to your uh, customer or client. But that's not something we have yet. Okay, so let me show you how STP will work. So let's imagine we're running payroll. So that screen looks very similar to what we've just done. So we would select for the, a given pay date each of the employees that we are paying for this pay event. So in this instance, we've chosen three and we click on process payroll as is currently the situation. Now it comes up with the standard payroll screen. Now you can't see all this screen, but it's the same where it has the base hourly rates and hours and the total. And if you were to scroll down that screen, you would see the ability to add additional base rates, overtime, allowances, etc. The one difference is, if you look up the top, it has a bit of a workflow here. So you can see Jeremy has the bar below him because we're on Jeremy. It tells us we've already done Arthur. So the important change is it groups these employees together based on who we're using, based on who we selected on the previous screen. Because the STP stuff will happen once we've processed all the employees for that pay event. So once we've processed payroll, it generates a payslip. Um, as is the case now. And then when we send the payslip, it gives us a confirmation that the payslip sent. It would then automatically come up with the screen for the next employee to run payroll based on which employees you selected on the first screen. Now, when you finished running, running payroll for all those employees, it will automatically prompt you with this payroll summary screen. So that shows you a summary of all the employees that you paid on this pay event um, and the payment details. And then you have this button, process single touch payroll. So we click on that and it comes up with the declaration. So you need to type your name in here. That's the declaration, that it's true and correct. And we click on lodge single touch payroll. And it jumps us through to our status screen. Now notice you can access this screen anytime. So down the bottom, um, the options down the bottom of the app are exactly the same, except there's an additional one here for STP. So what this shows us, this shows us the STP files that have been um, successfully submitted. So we have two tabs at the top. We've got complete and we've got outstanding. So complete, they're the ones that have gone through successfully. And if we click on one of those, it tells us it, that it's passed all those validations that we do and that the ATO does and that we've received confirmation they've received the file. So that's what happens when everything works as we want it to. Now, if we have an issue, um, and then we click on outstanding. Now, down the bottom here, we've got pending OTO response. Now, the ATO have actually said to us, they can take up to, I think, 24 hours to give us confirmation they've received the file. Now, I have a feeling that's just giving themselves some leeway. We do expect it to be instantaneous, but that's what the ATO specification does. So potentially once you submit the file, it will then be in this box down here where it says pending um, ATO response. But the ones in that box down there have successfully passed the validations. The ones up here where it says action required have not. So when we click on this drop down, it will tell us what the problem is. So for example, it says validate employee details. So it says, uh, the problem is something, re-enter employer ABN and validate. Now, we've managed to set up the system, so you don't need to back out of here. You can click on that line there, on the action line, and it will actually take you straight through to the employer setup where the, where the ABN is. So this just takes us through to the ABN screen, and you can check that you've got the right ABN. We then save that record, and we come back to our STP screen, and then we can re-lodge it with the ATO. 
Okay, so I know we're running out of time. That was rather brief. I'm just going to check if there's any questions about STP. It seems like we've got couples. Um, okay, so Rochelle, as a registered agent, we're required to obtain lodgement authority from employees at each payment lodgement. Um, this is separate to the engagement authority. Ah, so my apologies, this may have just highlighted uh, my imperfect uh, knowledge of this area. We'll easy pace it, provide an easy process for that lodgement. So we have the ability to attach forms in our setting screens. What I can't tell you at this point, uh, so that's something you can do reasonably easily. What I can't say at this point, Rochelle, is that there'll be an online form that someone can st sort of fill out on the app itself. That is absolutely the goal. That's what we look to do. We try and automate as much stuff as possible. Um, but I don't want to promise you when that might not, when that might be available. We'd like to think a lot of these changes around STP, I mean, the standard STP system will be ready 1st of July. A lot of the other extras we'd like to see, we penciled in for the first quarter. So we expect them to come sometime during July or August or potentially September. But I don't want to make promises around that. But I will follow up. I'm pretty sure our product manager is aware of the, the distinction you've made there, even though uh, it turns out I wasn't aware of that distinction. Um, does the software allow extra deductions and extra taxes such as hex amounts? Yeah, so we've got a, um, I'll just jump into the very quickly. Um, we have um, da, 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 employee. So if we look at the employee record, in their tax band, you can choose. So you can put their help. Help, I understand, is the new, is the new hex. And we can also, uh, oh, sorry, there, there are the different tax bands, but uh, we can enter uh, help details, uh, help details there, which will make those uh, allow you to do those deductions. Okay, let's go back to the questions. How secure is the employee information? Uh, it's all very secure. So all our data is hosted on Microsoft Azure. They are compliant with what they call iOS uh, 10. 10127, no, 27001. And that is the security standard the Australian Tax Office has asked um, us to be compliant with. So it's all hosted, as I said, on Microsoft Azure and they are compliant with that standard. We can't actually even, as staff at uh, Easy Payslet, easily get at that data. And so there are a lot of security uh, protocols that we've set up to allow for that. Okay, so I'm gonna very quickly jump back to slides just to see if I can uh, get through these in the one and a half minutes I've got left. Okay, so we see easy pace for, uh, for bookkeepers in two ways. We see customers self-serving, and we also see customers using bookkeepers to do payroll on their behalf. So currently, bookkeepers can set up multiple accounts on behalf of their clients. Um, however, they do need a unique email address. That They need to set up the account with a unique email address for each customer. Um, however, we are developing a dashboard specifically for bookkeepers to access multiple customer accounts from one logon. So what that will mean is if you're a bookkeeper, you can set up using your registered agent number. You can then set up a customer account and you can enter yourself or your customer can do this, can enter yourself as an authorised intermediary. Once you are entered as that authorised intermediary, when the bookkeeper uses their specific dashboard logon, it will come up with a dashboard that will list all their customer accounts for which they've been entered as that registered intermediary. So that means you can uh, have one logon, your own bookkeeper logon, that will show you all your accounts and let you jump through, jump between the accounts to, to manage their payroll. Um, when we have that technology, and that's, as I said, slated for, uh, for uh, quarter one, um, so from, from July on, so July or August we're hoping for this, then we'll have the functionality where we can actually see which clients are attached to which bookkeepers and we'd look at working with organisations um, such as um, the AET to do deals for bookkeepers where we can give uh, bookkeepers a discount for, for using Easy Payslip. Um, we are also looking at, in August, um, building in integration with other packages. So Xero is an obvious one. It's, a, it's actually a very simple process using one of their APIs, but we're also looking at QuickBooks and MYOB. Yeah, also, as I said, we talk to all our customers and we try and talk to as many bookkeepers as possible as well. So we're also really open to getting feedback about what sort of features I'd like to see. 
being aware or keeping in mind that our design principles, which everything has to be simple, we have to keep it so it's mobile, we have to keep it so it's compliant, and we have to keep it so it's fair for all our customers. And we're always looking at new products to support the ATO's digital office initiative. So as I said, we see ourselves as partners of small businesses, much like I imagine bookkeepers do. So we're looking at what rules are changing, what sort of um, regimes um, the ATO is bringing in, and how we can support that with new products. And very lastly, more information, give us a call, visit our website, or get on and give it the free trial a go. I'm just gonna jump onto our website. You can find all of the relevant information there. We have some very useful how-to videos. We have some information on STP. Um, so here's our website. I'll just show you the pricing. So $8.80 for one to four employees, $12.95 to one to six. One to 10 is $19.95. And then you can manually add as many additional employees as you want at $2 per month. There is no lock-in plan. You can cancel any time at all. And I'll just show you our help page. So we've got a bunch of uh, frequently asked questions. Lots of good information there. Um, how to edit employee tax details, for example gives you step-by-step -step guides, there are pictures there sometimes, how to do end of the closed, um, closed procedures, and there are also training videos for really common ones. So how to add an employee, how to process payroll, how to do reporting, how to send an employee forms, and we're creating uh, additional videos all the time. So I apologize for going slightly over time, it wasn't too much, I'm just gonna, there's one more question. How long do we retain data, and how long is it retained if the subscription is canceled? Uh, very good question, Michelle. I, I can't tell you that off the top of my head. So I will take down that question and get back to you. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, again, I'd like to really thank everyone for attending. It's really great for us to be able to share our product, whether you like it or not, just for us to be able to show everyone out there what we've done, what the thinking behind our product is, and, and to try and engage the bookkeeper community. Um, so thank you for attending. Thanks again to Sam and Michelle and AAT for putting on the event. Um, we will be doing a specific um, Easy Pace STB um, event um, coming soon. I haven't announced a date yet. Just to show you in a bit more detail those STP screens. Feel free to get in contact with us at any time. Call the number or send us an email. It's info at easypacelet.com. And now I'll just pass you back to Sam. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, great presentation. I'm sure everyone that listened able to get something out of that and can see the applicability of this to their clients. We do have a quick question lastly from Sue. Sue, I think um, from what Paul said, you can either go to the website or you can email info at Easy Payslip, was it? Was the contact? Yeah, so look, the um, easiest thing is just either download the app or jump on the website. So I'm on the website here. You just click on free trial and it will come up with a screen where it asks for an email address and password. Once you've done that, uh, so I'll just sign out. So basically all you need to do to create an account is putting your email and password. That will then take you to a screen where you can set up one of those previous. And, oops, passwords don't match. Don't match. Okay, so an account's already set up. So what I just did then, and this is that screen where you enter the business details. So business name, phone number. Once you've done that, you've already done step one. So that means you've set up your employer. The next thing to do, oh, I mean, you, when you're ready, the next thing to do is set up an employee and then you're already ready to go. So you actually don't need any intervention from us. What I suggest you do, um, set up a test account. If you're not sure, have a play around. You can always change the details, delete the employees, or if you really want help, just give us a call and we're absolutely happy to walk you through this. Um, but we get very few calls asking for help with setup because most people find it quite self-explanatory. Although we do get questions from people about some of the fields when they're adding employees. So easiest thing, jump on the website, set up an account, and then just log out. You can then set up it near multiple accounts just with a new email address and password, or have a go by the app. Awesome. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, really clear and really easy, which is the main goal here. So 
Reminder that today's session will be recorded or has been recorded. So we'll be uploading that to the Tech Talk another section of the website under the resources tab. Um, so make sure you check that out and any other Tech Talks you might not have got to. Um, we'll be having another Tech Talk last Thursday of the month coming end of May. And as Paul mentioned, we are going to have an SDP for micro employers webinar to complement our current series on STP. So keep an eye out for that and register if you're interested so you can go into Easy Payslips STP solutions in more detail. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Paul, for presenting on behalf of Easy Payslip. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Sam.